Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and uh, today we're going to be taking a first look or my first look, our first look before the trolls start at the Gigabyte uh, G1 Assassin 2. Now obviously this is based on the X79 chipset uh, so it's the 2011 socket. Uh, this is just a basic look of the box at the moment. I'm doing this in my light tent because uh, I'm massively, massively short on time and I'm just trying to get everything done in the easiest way possible so I'm not doing this in the desk on the normal desk as I normally would do but as you can see it's a very gamer orientated design we've got like the kind of war kind of shoot 'em up kind of rusty box uh, almost digital camo as well kind of design got the uh, G1 killer logo there with the uh, Gigabyte gaming motherboards and all that kind of malarkey. It says here that it comes with the killer E2100 network and chip, which the last one did. Uh, this one actually has Bluetooth 4 and a Wi Fi card inclu included. Um, XFi uh, 20K2, or however you want to pronounce it. So, Creative XFi. Um, and then we've got the uh, 3D Power and 3D BIOS logos um, that's all something that I uploaded the videos yesterday about this is actually quite a new thing uh, one of the reasons why Gigabyte is uh, slightly late with getting their samples out is they've made um, all their power digital now and that was what they were going away working on uh, was to get that um, rolled out before launch uh, but I'm just going to uh, turn the uh, camera off quickly and turn the box over Right then peeps, on to the other side of the box. Uh, we'll start up in the uh, top left and we'll work our way round. Basically that's uh, the section there about the uh, uh, onboard Bigfoot Networks Killer E2100 uh, gaming network um, platform. Then we've got here talking about SATA 3 and USB 3. There's a front panel um, adapter included. But obviously you've got SATA 3, 6 gigabit a second and USB 3. Slightly further down, this is something that I looked at just a minute ago and I quite like the look of. Um, the back panel overclock button and then there's an also a uh, button on the back which you can just hit and um, switches between BIOSes but the, each side actually lights up so you can see quite clearly which one you're uh, um, using. Further down, uh, it's about the audio, onboard creative sound blaster x digital audio processor, 20K2 with x extreme fidelity and EAX AHD5 technologies. That's a bit of a mouthful there. So it's basically creative x um, Slightly further down, it's talking about the Nick Icon high-end audio capacitors on the board. Uh, Built-in front audio headphone amplifiers. That's good for you gamers. Uh, I know a lot of people use... Um, I don't know why my camera's not focusing today. Anyway, um, I know a lot of you uh, would be plugging your headphones into the back, but this will make things a lot easier and quicker for you for at least taking your headphones in and out if you do that a lot. Up on this side, let's talk about the... Uh, Super Shield locked and loaded heat pipe design. I'll show you uh, more about this when we get inside. Um, there's uh, five smart panel connectors, as you can see here. Fan one, CPU fan, and then we go further around. Fan two, fan three, fan four. So technically you've got the CPU fan and then five other fan connectors. Uh, PCIe Gen 3. Uh, this is obviously dependent on the CPU and the, and the graphics card anyway, but the uh, the lanes are, you know, full PCI Express Gen 3. So it's not compatible. It's yeah, uh, a lot less confusing than it was before. And then further down here, it's yet more talk about the 3D power, 3D BIOS, um, and then some graphs and stuff. But anyway, that's enough talk about the box. Let's get inside and take a look at the accessories. 
Right, and Pete, trying to do this with one hand is never going to be easy, but this is a Gigabyte um, sticker pack. Uh, now, I'm really not a fan of these. I see these as being a bit childish. Um, yeah, I'm, I know a lot of you will use them. It's just not to my own personal taste. But anyway, there's a lot of stickers there should you want to use them. Uh, there's also a Gigabyte um, poster. So that's all good. But then we move on to the goodies. Right, I'll do this first because this is a... Um, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi card, and then you've got uh, is it there reels here. That's nice. Not being funny. This is something that's not been used a lot recently. Um, uh, I think it's been done since, but I've not ha had personally had anything like this since the days of the P5K Premium, which came with Wi-Fi. Um, I'm personally. A fan of like if you can't get a, a network cable into your room to use home plugs um, obviously there's going to be a lot of you out there that do use Wi-Fi um, and Wi-Fi is getting better with um, wireless N and all that kind of stuff um, and the latencies are getting a lot better so this you know I'm not saying it's a, a bad thing by any stretch of the imag imagination but it does give you choice and obviously the Bluetooth does allow you to easily connect to your phone and other devices that use it as well. So to bundle it, this could be very useful for a lot of you. Um, obviously you get a, a manual and your driver CD, so we don't need to worry too much about that. And then there's another manual saying about the uh, um, Wi-Fi stuff. That's the back panel connector with another G1 Assassin logo on it. And then we've got some... Uh, this looks like USB, but it doesn't actually say on there. So anyway, so I move that out of the way. Comes with a, an SLI bridge, a three-way SLI bridge, a Crossfire bridge, SATA cables, more SATA cables, and this is the front panel USB 3 this is a three and a half inch drive fitment if you can't if your case hasn't got a three and a half inch drive fitment many of them are going to have an adapter so that you can put it into one of your normal optical bays um, so if your case doesn't support USB 3 you can uh, use the onboard header and attach this to the front of your case so pretty much you can bring your case up to date now that's the accessories uh, I think it's now time we move on and actually have a look at the board considering how long we've been here already. Right then peeps, on to the actual board itself. The bit that you've really, in all honesty, been here to see in the first place. Now, straight away, I'm pretty sure I know what everyone's going to be looking at. First of all, you're going to be thinking, oh, it's black and green like the last one. And then you're going to probably catch your eye on the gun. Um, so, yeah, that's the uh, chipset heatsink. Uh, we can't really sort call it the Southbridge anymore because it's kind of a mixture of the Northbridge and the um, Southbridge. So we'll just leave it as the chipset. But it's a passive heatsink. Um, obviously no fan or anything on there. You can see where the main bulk of the uh, heatsink is here. With the heat pipe going off and then this is pretty much aesthetics now the gun probably going to be a bit marmite uh, some of you may like it some of you may not uh, but by the time you've got a graphics card in there it's going to cover up you know most of this bit anyway um, so if you don't like it you're probably not going to see it if you do like it then you're probably going to want to see a bit more so, but but it's a it's a bit of a strange one Moving on to the rest of the heat sinks, you can see up here that this is more like uh, kind of a machine gun barrel where this is like the fins to keep everything cool uh, and this would be like the tip where the actual bullet itself would come out. Um, but yeah, it's all heat piped together, look. Runs all the way up and then goes in. But we'll, uh, if I spin the board around, there's not a lot for me to grab hold of on this. We'll start at the top and we'll work our way down because there's your 8-pin 
uh, power connector. There's no other power connectors on the board. Um, CPU fans there, and that's fan one. I believe fan two is down there. Then there's fan three, and then there's fan four. I can't remember from the box where the fifth one was, but I know there is another one. I'm just kind of looking for it with you now. But anyway, over here, something I've just noticed, which I think is quite cool. If you have a look, the audio um, capacitors have got a shield round. So maybe that's to help with the um, uh, interference. Get our first look there of the killer chipset. Now, we'll work our way round now. Um, uh, we'll start at the top and then we'll come down. Don't forget you can pause at any moment during this. 24 pin. Uh, front panel USB 3. SATA 6. SATA 2. Gigabyte SATA 6. Front panel connectors, three lots of USB 2, front panel audio connector, PCI, uh, PCI Express 1, PCI Express 1, 16 times lane PCI Express, 8 times lane PCI Express, 16 times lane PCI Express. So if you are running SLI, then you've got a good three slots clearance so if you've got a dual card it's going to cover this slot up sorry if you've got a dual card it's going to come up to here if you've got a triple card it's going to come up to here so a normal kind of graphics card will cover this part up which means that you've then got two more slots before the next PCI Express so plenty of room there plenty of air going to be able to get in between so for two card SLI, it's actually very well spaced. Um, I quite like that, to be perfectly honest with you. Don't forget these are PCI Express 3. Not compatible, but if you have a PCI Express 3 card, and obviously the 2011 CPUs um, are going to support it anyway, so that's all kind of PCI Express Gen 3 ready. Although we've not really got anything we can test on it yet. Um, there's your creative chip just there and it is a proper creative chip as well it's not software based moving up there's a couple of Samsung chips there which I'm assuming are to deal with uh, USB 3 I've not seen another one on the board so it, it may be doing one for the back panel one for the front I don't know maybe they're shared I don't know the ins and outs one thing I will say is we've obviously got just dual channel memory um, and basically you can just use your normal 1155 dual channel memory with this you're not gonna have to buy anything um, special uh, I think that's pretty much to keep it kind of with the gamer orientation um, rather than going with the quad channel obviously you can get um, uh, you can still fill both lots up if you want lots more memory but it's easy to get four gigabyte and even eight gigabyte sticks of memory now. So even if you did just run two sticks, you could still technically be running 16 gigabyte. Um, but let's face it, eight gigs plenty for most games anyway, unless you're doing monstrous renders and stuff like that. A dual channel is going to be perfect for a game or fine for a game. Um, something else that strikes me is that there's not necessarily a massive amount of cooling over the, the rest of the board. Um, but from my experience with the other boards, the, the other heat sinks aren't actually touching anything anyway. So I don't think that they're getting specific, you know, very hot. Um, and more often than not, the heat sinks, you know, where you'd think a north bridge would be and up along this section of the MOSFETs, uh, are normally for aesthetics more than anything else anyway. Um, but yeah, there we go. I'm going to give you again, I'm going to give you another slow walk around the board before we go on to the back panel
So onto the back panel. This is uh, an overclock button. Uh, as yet, I've not tested it, but I'm assuming that's right. You flick that and it'll just auto overclock to a certain setting, either a uh, user set or overclock to a specific setting that you put in the BIOS. Um, I originally got this confused where it's purple and green with the purple and green on the um, uh, PS2. But this is actually a button that you can switch between uh, BIOSes and you'll see the light change on this when the, the buttons are pressed in. So you can have two different BIOSes set. Uh, the little dot underneath is actually the CMOS or BIOS reset button. Um, it is easy to press but it's not like it's a massive button you can press by mistake. If you just rub your finger over it you can't press it. You do have to get your nail there and make sure that you do press it. But anyway we've got a PS2 here, so obviously even some gamers still use PS2 for their keyboards. Um, two USB 2s. We've got uh, eSATA down here with two more USB 2s. USB 3 here. Two more USB 2s. Your eth eth Ethernet, which is obviously controlled by the, um, uh, the killer chip. And then you've got your audio here. You've obviously got uh, digital optical out. And then your kind of your normal um, analog connections that you'd expect. And there's another look of the shield that's around those capacitors. But if I turn the board back round, there you go, guys. That's our first look at the Gigabyte G1 Assassin 2. Don't forget to subscribe and comment. Uh, favorite it if you like the video. Please check my other videos on the channel because there are lots more on there. But for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you. Out.